Mr. Nice Guy was done at a period where we had just secured Nick. I called him up one day about 5 o'clock in the morning. He says it's 6, but I think he was still sleeping. I knew because I was up smoking freebase all night, and I called him up and I said, Are you ready? Because I had just been done with Chuck. We, we had fired Chuck Beeler, and, and we went and we jammed, and, and uh, Alice Cooper asked us to do the song. You know, we had his benefaction on it, so there was this eerie little presence, you know, in the, in the studio. We had Desmond Child do the thing, and, and uh, I mean, it was cool having Desmond do it because, you know, he's a big hit songwriter, but, you know, we butted heads. He wanted me to say something in there where it says, I got no girls because they watch the TV, instead of I got no friends because they read the papers. And I'm thinking, wait a second. You know, and it's it just like, it didn't make any sense to me at the time. So I, I spent a good part of my time a, a, at that session really inebriated. And, and when we did the video for that song, you know, it was a three-piece. So one of the guys in the video is really our manager back there hiding. David Ellison hates that song. Breakpoint was uh, a song that we had um, kind of did. In the beginning, we were being accused of it being a UFO kind of riff off for Lights Out. And um, it was done during the Countdown to Extinction uh, demo tape sessions. And um, now, Nick is a member of Nintendo's Anonymous. He's got Nintendonitis, and, and you know he sits in front of, he's one of those video brats. And, and when we were approached to use that song for the Super Mario Brothers game, I, I mean, I, I think probably Nick spent more time in front of his Nintendo game than he has alive and breathing. So he was, you know, he got wood when he found out that we were going to do that. That song to me was really cool because there's two different versions of it. The one version where we had... Um, we had a couple people coming in on the demo and saying, you know, playing the persona, uh, the, the characters in it about, you know, the doctor and the nice guy and stuff like this. And, and then um, we had Junior in there and he goes, sedate me? Cool. <laughs> Straight jacket? <laughs> ah! You know, and, and at the time it was really funny because, you know, I mean, it was a period where sedation was, you know, something that was really prevalent in our lives. Schwarzenegger asked us to do Last Action Hero. We said, well, what's the movie going to be about? What's the plot like? You know it's going to be high action, kind of really intense, aggro kind of flick. So that's how Angry Again came out. And each one has its own separate concept. And I think that, like he was saying before about the fans, I mean, if we were to just shuffle off all of our B-side material that we don't think is worthy of being on our album, that would be a real lame move. Diadems was a song that I, I wrote the lyrics to when I was in a straitjacket up in Wickenburg in Arizona when I got committed one time by the band, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, um, it's about the book of Revelation. I mean, everybody's saying I'm a god squatter now and all this stuff. And I mean, I'll, I'll take anybody with a brain and that's someone that can read English and see from the very first record there's been religious ref, uh, reflections and influences. And, and what it talks about is, you know, What's happening? It was a very, very uh, Megadeth-esque stairway to heaven, but that way. One man rules the earth and rides a sympathetic priest Ten diadems to drown them all The world religion at his feet Go to Hell was a song that uh, we were approached to do by the Bill and Ted uh, bogus movie, and um, we... Uh, Initially, we had been contacted by Tom Wally at Interscope, who was someone at Capitol, who, in Capitol's ignorance at that time, with that previous administration, let him go, who I think is a genius still, and he asked us to write it. I had totally different lyrics to it, and he said, he read the lyrics and he goes, Dave, those aren't Mustaine lyrics. He goes, I want it to be harsh, and I said, cool. I'll make it so harsh it'll make your toenails turn green. I'll give you toxic shock, you know, and, and so I wrote something that was just absolutely just disgusting. Paranoid, uh, 
came about totally by luck and for me I'm probably the biggest Sabbath fan in the band I know everybody likes Sabbath but I grew up just religiously listening to Sabbath and uh, we had decided that we're gonna try to see if we could do this song for this album and we listened to every CD I went and I got all my CDs and we listened to every Black Sabbath CD and the problem was we were in the studio at the time and we had just finished cutting 99 Ways to Die and we had this massive tone and it was just buff and balls out guitars and everything and then we put in these old CDs from like 1970 same system that we were playing our music through and it just didn't really hold up the same way it did in the bedroom with the bongs and the black lights and all that stuff you know and it really I hate to say it, but it kind of paled, and I was feeling like, you know, this kind of should be better left as it is, you know, and even I was agreeing that, and everybody was just getting bummed on the whole thing, and we're like, we're done, we're tired, we're working, let's get back on the road, and uh, I don't know, we, we still had our instruments on, and we were jamming, and Max said, well, just do whatever, and I'll roll the tape, and we rolled one take of Paranoid, and that's it. to die was kind of a tongue-in-cheek type of thing you know and Megadeth if you can't see the humor in our music you're missing the point because there's a lot of humor in it and when David brought up the idea of uh, 99 ways to do anything on the bus we were talking about it and like everybody think about the most horrible way to die the most disgusting way to go you know falling off a cliff or you know whatever any kind of weird brain so you're not in a phone booth with your mother-in-law just all kinds of crazy things like that and uh, we all wrote them down and put them together and and uh, the song was born from that basic idea and, and musically it just came right together it was a real Megadeth heavy anthemic guitar type type of thing and that's the same day that we did Paranoid but uh, 99 Ways to Die happened in about three days and Paranoid took about 12 minutes when we recorded So Far So Good So What, we set out to record Problems by the Pistols and, and a manager that we had who was no longer uh, among the living because he got in a fight with his brother over a bologna sandwich and died in a knife fight. <laughs> um, That's he, a uh, story. Yeah, he, uh, he said we should do Anarchy because we should be a political band instead of, you know, a, a disturbed band. Because I was very much into the whole James Dean way of growing up being really disturbed, and I think that that's how the press still perceives me as being disturbed. And, you know, we went over to this crossing over to a political thing, that's where the Anarchy thing came. We still have the two-inch of problems done with Chuck and, and Jeff Young. It's much different, but... Uh, you know, problems is the one that we chose in the first place. Yeah, it's a problem. 